What's going on everybody? Hope everyone is doing well. My name is Jason and in today's video I wanted to take a brief look at the recent history between the Hamilton Tiger Cats and the Toronto Argonauts to see how one-sided it actually has been over the last three years since the cancelled 2020 season. And this comes on the heels of a pretty decisive victory by the Toronto Argonauts in week two of the 2023 CFL season where they won 32-14 to over the Tiger Cats. So I thought this would be a good time to look at the recent history of this robbery and if you guys want me to do this for other rivalries around the CFL in the future, be sure to let me know. But with that said, let's get into it. So what's notable about the recent struggles the Tiger Cats have had against the Argos is that between 2018 and 2019, the Tiger Cats were a perfect 6-0 in the regular season against the Toronto Argonauts. They had really dominated that rivalry for a while there, um, including winning like seven straight on Labor Day before last year. So, I mean, that's really interesting how the tide has turned uh, since they came back from the 2020 season. Now, let's take a look at the you know, recent history, go over each game and, you know, just my uh, thoughts on each of them um, and see what I can recall from each of these games. So, in 2021, first game of the season between the Argos and Tiger Cats was actually uh, the Labor Day game, which was the Tiger Cats home opener. The Tiger Cats actually did win this one 32-19. Um, you know, I remember Dane Evans throwing a big touchdown pass to David Unger in that game. And, um, you know, they just kind of had a lot of energy in the building that game. And um, first home game after having that canceled season off. So um, it was just a rare set of circumstances for the Tiger Cats. So I think that it was understandable why they got the victory there. And then the next week, they go to Toronto, and they lose in an absolute heartbreaker. They have a bunch of quarterback injuries, um, and they ultimately lose on a missed extra point that hits the upright on the last play of the game, or pretty much the last play of the game. Uh, Michael Domagella uh, had his struggles as a Tiger Cats place kicker, uh, including that infamous moment. And I think that the Argos in that game, I believe that was Nick Arbuckle starting around this time for the Argos. Um, they didn't really look like they were the better team necessarily in that game. The Tiger Cats uh, had a late comeback to, um, you know, potentially tie the game before that missed extra point. So at this point, it really didn't look like the tide had turned in this rivalry as of yet. But then you get to week 10, that Argos visit Hamilton and win this game 24-23. to And I remember I was at this game and the Argos had a 10-point comeback in the fourth quarter or 9-point comeback, two-possession comeback. Uh, that is, and I think that, you know, I think they were down like 23-14 uh, with about 10 minutes left. McLeod Butler thompson I remember playing very well. I believe this is the game that DeBarros Daniels had that huge uh, reception in the end zone where he was kind of turning around and spinning. Um, it was an incredible catch and one of the best plays of that season. And so this Week 10 game in 2021, I think this is where you start to see the tide turn, at least in terms of the regular season success for the Argos. And then in Week 15 of that year, the Argos won the game 31-12. to I remember that um, Jeremiah Mazzoli was playing in this game, uh, was wildly inaccurate. I think that, you know, McLeod Bethel-Thompson was just much more consistent again, and that's really what the trend started to be. The Argos, even though they didn't have flashy quarterback play from McLeod Bethel-Thompson, and now Chad Kelly, um, you know, starting the season here in 2023, they had much more consistent quarterback play than the Tiger Cats over these uh, 10 games we're going to look at here. And then, you know, they actually end up winning the East Final against Toronto 27-19 to that year. This is the one notable exception on the board. Uh, the Tiger Cats were actually down, I believe, 16-0 at halftime. They get the big punt return from Happy White in the second half to really jumpstart that comeback. Dane Evans has, I think, a perfect second half uh, completion-wise. And I think that it was just a perfect set of circumstances to get the Tiger Cats to that home Grey Cup. But like I said, that is the notable exception on the board because you look to 2022 and the Argos win three of the four regular season matchups again against the Tiger Cats, including week nine. The Toronto Argonauts win 34 to 20 over the Tiger Cats. Um, don't really remember too much about this game. I mean, it might have been one of those games that Dane Evans uh, threw a bunch of interceptions. I think he may have gotten hurt in this game. Um, but I remember one of these games that year. Dane really uh, was a turnover machine. I mean, wasn't the only game last year he was, but I think in these matches against Toronto, I think against Jamal Peters, he had three interceptions in one of these games. So these struggles at the quarterback position, definitely a major factor as to why the Tiger Cats have lost a lot of these regular season matchups to the Argos over the past couple of years. And then the next week in week 10, the Tiger Cats actually win their first and only game of the season against the Argos, 34-27 to at home. This was a game started by Matthew Schilt, so um, that's something to keep 
keep in mind with uh, Matthew Schultz looking to start the next game here in 2023 for the Tiger Cats that they did have some success last year with Matthew Schultz at the helm, uh, but they get the win there. The only Tiger Cat quarterback to defeat the Argos last season was Matthew Schultz. And then you move forward to Week 12. The Argos really just hammered the Tiger Cats in this one, 37 to 20. That might have been the the game that um, I'm thinking of in terms of the uh, the high turnovers from Dane Evans. Uh, so I mean, this is really where you start to see the Argos have such an edge over the Tiger Cats. Uh, and then Week 13, the Tiger Cats are super banged up in terms of their quarterback position. I believe they started Jamie Newman for this Labor Day game. Just didn't look the part in his first career CFL start. Easy victory for Toronto, 28 to eight in Week 13 of 2022. Uh, so they win three to four in 2021. And in 2022, that's pretty dominant in terms of um, you really can't expect somebody to win four to four against a team. We have seen it in the past in the CFL, but it's pretty rare. Uh, so winning three of the four against your chief rival, that is huge in the CFL uh, in terms of advancing yourself in the regular season standings. And then you fast forward to this year. Um, in week two of 2023, the Argos with Chad Kelly, their newly minted starter, in their opening game of the season, they win at home 32-14. to Again, a big story is the quarterback play. Chad Kelly played a relatively clean game, no turnovers from him, I don't believe. And then Bo Levi Mitchell, a couple of big red zone interceptions. So regardless of if it's Dane Evans or Bo Levi Mitchell, um, so far in this recent history of this rivalry, we have seen the Argos have substantially better quarterback play or at least more consistent quarterback play than the than the Hamilton Tiger Cats, that is. So I think that it's very interesting looking back of the last couple of years since the pandemic, um, the canceled 2020 season, the Argos have won seven of the last 10 with the notable exception. And that includes um, you know, the Tiger Cats winning the East final against the Argos, which the Argos looked like a lot of that game, like they were going to win that game. So really, I think that the Argos have just been the better team over the last three years. I say that as a Tiger Cats fan, the Tiger Cats really have to step up their game when they play against the Argos, because this is a matchup that we could see in the playoffs later this year. If the Tiger Cats make it that far, that is it's not looking too good right now at 0-2. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think the Argos have looked a lot better. I think a major difference for them is that Ryan Dinwiddie is the coach now, as opposed to back in 2019, I believe it was Corey Chamberlain, uh, who didn't have much success as the coach of the Argos. So Ryan Dinwiddie, I think he's a very underrated coach on the offensive side of the ball. Um, you know, consistent offense that they've shown over the past couple of years has really been a driving force. I think they've been one of the more consistent offenses in the entire league, especially against the Tiger Cats. And um, I think the Tiger Cats, again, the turnovers have been really crucial in these matchups. I think that, you know, um, they've had some injuries along the way, obviously having to start Schiltz and Jamie Newman last year in these games. So, I think at the end of the day, the tide could turn in this robbery this season, uh, but it didn't get off to a very good start for the Tiger Cats in week two of 2023, so we'll have to see what happens the rest of the way. But with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on this robbery and the recent history of it down in the comment section below. And with that said, hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.